Research by Charity Chance UK shows that suspension rates for primary kids are at their highest level since 2006. It stated that children as young as five are being excluded and nearly all have special educational needs. Well, joining us in the studio is teacher Bobby Seagull. Bobby, um, I really appreciate you being on today, my friend. I've got a, a, a really strong opinion on this. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction? What is this report which in, in basic layman's terms and what's your response to it? So Chance UK, a charity based in the UK, have been looking at expulsions among primary school children. And what they found is that um, one ninety-seven percent of children that are excluded at primary school level have a special educational need. Wow. And then 90% of these children that get expelled or suspended at primary school, they don't get maths or English GCSE. So this ends their life chances and there's almost like a carousel. So these children, when they're young, there's some sort of classroom disruption. Then they get suspended or excluded. Then they sort of frequently move between different schools or uh, sort of PRU units, um, pupil referral units, and ultimately they get poor educational outcomes. Um, I'm, I'm, I really have a personal story here which Nick yeah. knows about very, very quickly. Yeah. Ava, uh, born with severe dyslexia, probably took us too long daughter, to realise, my Ava's daughter. Yeah. And um, at eight years of age, I actually sat in a parents' evening when the woman said to me, and I won't name her, I will do one day, she said, <laughs> we don't hear much from Ava, so I just leave her at the back. And I made the decision, and I'm lucky enough to be able to do it, to put a girl who couldn't spell her name age day, and Ava's the same backwards as forwards. And, and eight years later, at a private school, hard graft, special education needs, she's got eight GCSEs. I completely agree with you. Mm. There are too many kids with educational problems who are just become a statistic man. And people who are not lucky enough to be able to get their, their kid yeah. proper, like I could forever, it's a disgrace. Yes. Really strongly What about kind it. of things are children as young as five being excluded for? So, usually with schools, it's physical acts. Like it could be like throwing chairs, scissors, mm. but the numbers are staggering. And in fact, I heard Sir Michael Wilshaw, he's uh, the former head of Austin, actually the former head of my state school as well. So he was a tough teacher, but tough love worked. Um, but he said uh, that part of the reason for this exclusions failure is that there's a power strength imbalance between local authorities and the CEOs of these multi-academy trusts. So yeah. back in 2010, and the data bears this out, in 2010, 600 children were suspended, excluded from primary school. By 2018, it went up to 1,200, and now it's 22,000 children. That's because education... 20 to age six that, or under, that that's been because suspended. education beyond primary school is all about results. They don't care. It's about who gets what results. And in primary education, with all those reports, it's about making the the school look good. That's appalling I as know. well. And that's, that's what I say, because, again, 14 years, children are a little bit more difficult, but not, not from 600 to 22,000. So I think there's an issue here in terms of, like, local authorities yep. need to get more power back. I know in the, historically in the last 10, 15, 20 years, power's been moving away from... Was it been, being more devolved? Do yeah, we, yeah, it's not... Yeah. Do we need more, more money for send children in school, special education needs? So that's, that's what it is? Politics is all about making decisions and priorities. And I understand everyone's screaming for money, you know, healthcare, the military now, but education is so important. If we want to create a, a nation of young, educated citizens that are responsible, sensitive, compassionate, and productive for the UK, it starts in schools. And if we're having a situation where 22,000 children, age of six, are getting expelled, suspended, and again... On the these... back of the pandemic, where yeah, they didn't go to school uh, for two years, yeah? And there's so many knock-on effects, like their families, mm. their communities. And again, it's sad, because education is meant to be the thing that levels up society, not sure. levels down. And what happens to these children when they are excluded? Do they go to a different school, or are they just home-educated or left out of the system completely? So, so it's various systems. So initially, it's suspension, so it may be a couple of days, three, five days, and then an expulsion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes move to another school. And how's a six-year-old going to take a suspension? It's hardly a, a punishment that they would really understand. Oh, they probably think, oh, time Great, holiday. it's an extra yeah. weekend. And where so, are the parents and all this? Again, this is a tough one because I think that parents do take more responsibility. Quite right too, Bobby Seeger. But also, when we're suspending and expelling this many children, it suggests that our threshold for expulsion is yep. too low. Yeah, yeah. So It's, it's frightening. It is indeed. And these outcomes for these children, as you say, don't look good. They don't end up getting maths, uh, GCSEs, English GCSEs. Mm. But then they also feel, I imagine, quite isolated from society as a whole. So then become yeah. potentially adults who don't necessarily integrate with society and, and don't contribute to it. My daughter won't mind me saying this until she was 12. She didn't talk to anybody. Someone came to the house, she went to a room and yeah. played in the playroom. Now, she made house captain. She, I, I can't even tell you. It did just oh, make so me proud. want to cry. Well because she was given a chance. Not blowing smoke up my, my backside. Mm. What I'm saying is there are people who can't do that for their kids and those kids will become a statistic and that is not fair. Do you think so often we do in society, not mm. just with ch children, but look at kind of behaviours like this that think that are antisocial, just really quickly, and we tell them off for being naughty rather than really looking at what's going on with them? 
Yeah, actually, I think that that's a, a bigger issue because children, they don't, they're not born naughty. No. They do things, they learn by trial and improvement. So I think it's that, again, ultimately, I think expulsions are not working. All they're doing is passing the buck onto someone else. But ultimately, society has to pay the price for that. You're yeah. a legend. You, you are, are indeed. a West Ham fan. How do you feel a about West Ham us losing fan. to... Well, I'm going to the game on Thursday. We're playing Bayer Leverkusen. who won their first title in 120 years. Yes. We lost 2 of the first time. And they've won 46 good. games on the bounce, so we lost to Fulham. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> Seagull, you. you're Bobby Seagull, my legend. hunted hero. Yeah. Oh, you were on the telly together, we were, you? We were. Did you beat her? Yes, he did. But he very much beat me. He's wonderful. But thank uh, you so much, Bobby.